All right, Shalom. This is your brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash, the bonus to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to you, Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 18. And all things are of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, who hath reconciled us to himself by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that Yahweh Bashim al Shai was in Hamashiach, reconciling the world unto himself, and not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Hamashiach, as though Yahweh Bashim al Shai did beseech you by us. We pray you in Hamashiach's stead, be reconciled to Yahweh Bashim al Shai. All right, now I want to go into this. Excuse me. I want to go into this through the spirit because we are, um, and I'm going to entitle this lesson, the holy emissaries. All right. Now, when you look up the word emissary. All right. And I'm going to go into the etymon for it. All right. The etymology of emissary is this. Person sent on a mission from French, 1620s from French, a messer, or directly from Latin, a messerius, a scout, a spy, literally, that is sent out, all right? And it says send forth. Now, I want to get the word for ambassador in the etymology, all right? Because we have been sent out. All right, when you go into the word apostles, Beginning with our apostles, it means what? Sent out, sent forth. All right. Now, when you go to the etymology of ambassador, it reads late 14th century, also ambassador, diplomatic emissary of a ruler in the court of another. All right. And right now we're in the court or the world, the dominion of Esau, and we're sent as what? As ambassadors or an emissary of a ruler. All right. And again, when you go into that word emissary, it's a person that's sent out on, on a mission. All right. And what are we on a mission to do for the laborers is to proclaim the gospel for those who believe is to believe and let your belief be shown through your actions and your mannerisms. All right. Which means your, your conduct, how you carry yourself. All right. Because being an ambassador goes deeper than just the words and, and the spoken word. It's a conduct. You know, we all. um joy at the the account of King Solomon's kingdom being so rich that his servant looked almost was mistaken for uh, King Solomon. How? Because of how he looked and how he carried himself. Likewise, we are in part of that royal house as ambassadors. All right. Now, I want to go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 20 and get the Greek word for ambassadors. All right. So I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. And the Greek word for ambassador. All right. Is. Where are you? Beautiful. All right. This is the word for it. Let me see if I can play the audio for it. Strong's G, 4243. Press Bull. Press Bull. All right, press Bull. And it says to be older, prior by birth or in age, to be an ambassador, act as an ambassador. All right, Strong's definition says to be a senior in example, act as a representative. All right. And that's what we have been assigned to do. Every brother in their respective places. All right. The few sisters that do listen in their respective places. All right. We have been sent forth as a representation of a world that has not yet been manifested on on this side of life, if you will. That's why uh, Hamashiach said this is how they'll know you are my disciples. All right. If you have love one toward another. All right. That shows you what 
and how and and most importantly the faith of the individual based on their actions that's why uh paul expressed you know to have the fruits of the spirit why because you are a representation of that holy order your conduct is a representation of that holy order and that's why the lord has given us this this um beautiful grace period uh to strive for perfection you know so that when you do make mistakes you're able to uh understand it adjust and offend less lord willing because every individual believer through the spirit is a representation of the heavenly father man and that's something that um is expressed through your mannerisms as well as your words as well as you uh continuing to uh rehearse the righteous acts this truth changes who you are in relations to other people. That's why family members separate themselves from you. All right, if you can receive it, it's because light has come into the world and men hate dark. Uh, men hate light and love darkness. Because your actions, your mannerisms should force people around you, if they're not in touch with that light, to reconsider their life decisions and what they believe morally. And that's why we are sent as ambassadors, as representatives of that kingdom. All right. Now, let me go to. Yes, this is John 13 and 35. All right. And it reads. Uh, I'll start at 34. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I loved you, that ye also love one another. By this and this this is love, all right? Um love is 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 being able to tell your brethren things that may not be uh, pleasant to the ears but are necessary for that brother to be the best version of himself through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai that he can be. That's why the Lord has raised up the laborers to go out on the highways and hedges and preach this gospel. That is a display in Hebrews it calls it a, a labor of love. That we have to look like the spectacle, um, the basis of men to the rest of the world to save them that believe. We are a representation of a world that is unlike the one we exist in right now. And that's why the scriptures say that just shall live by faith. But that faith is going to be seen. Most people are going to recognize that you are different based on your mannerisms based on your actions and not what you declare to believe in. And that's why this is a challenge for all those believers. That's why it's a straight gate. And few there be that find it. Because on this in this straight gate, you are a representation of a kingdom that is not yet enacted on this planet yet. And that has to be seen in actions. And I and I say that to say this that the work doesn't stop. All right. We're close to the end of this kingdom, but you have to continue to be mindful and myself included that you're a representation of the how by Shai. And what do I mean by that? It's not just about um, keeping the law per se. All right. But it's about how you conduct yourself in public. Are they going to see the fruits of the spirit? You know, one thing that I do recognize all the time is the um, the ability of the apostles to and how they conduct themselves with people who aren't necessarily believers. You know how they're able to uh, be express charm, you know, express an ability to be uh, pe at peace with all men, if at all possible. You know, the doctrine speaks for itself. But your mannerisms and these things should be in a way that the ministry be not blamed. And that's a part of being a representative of the Yahweh Hashem Shai. All right. As a matter of fact, let's get this. I wanted something else, but I'm going to grab this. This is 2 Corinthians 6 and 3. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. All right. And through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai, that is why we are commanded to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You know, we are, um, it's wisdom that was given to us in Ecclesiastes that whatsoever is given to us to do, we do it with all of our might. Why do we do that? Because 
if it's somebody at your job, for example, and they see how well you do your job, they're going to look at you as someone different. They're going to see that you represent something different. When you look at two thirds of our people, what do they represent? They represent everything that this society has told us about us as a people. By what? By their mannerisms, by their conduct. When you apply these scriptures to every aspect of your life, you automatically separate yourself. And a lot of people are watching you that won't come up to you and tell you they're watching you. A lot of people recognize that you are different that will never tell you that they recognize you're different. But that is a part of being a representative of the kingdom to come. It's not necessarily about recognition. It's about you being sent on a mission. And that mission never turns off. We're growing. All right. We're going to make mistakes and we have to get back up and strive for perfection. But we have to continue to keep and maintain that mindset that in all things, we're a representation of Yahweh Bashim Shai. And that this mindset should be applied to all aspects of our life. All right. Yo, yeah. Um, Esau is about to fall. We know that. Yeah, this world is about to be destroyed. We understand that as well. And we believe that. But it doesn't mean that we can uh, neglect our responsibilities and not apply this wisdom to every aspect of our life because that's why it was given. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people are going to see how Bashmiao Shai in you based on your actions. And you can't reserve being a representative of your Yahweh Shema Shai only when um, it suits you. That's not the calling. The calling is that we represent Yahweh Shema Shai in word and in deed 24-7. All right. This is Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. And it reads, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out. And to be trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. That means you can't tuck the light at all. Now, of course, we're Clark Kent at the jobs. You know, you don't go in there. With fringes on, you know, uh, screaming on people. But the wisdom that we've been given through the spirit can allow you to be a representation of Yahweh Shem Shai everywhere you go, really. And it's deeper than having uh, fringes so that they know that you are a Hebrew Israelite. It's more in your mannerisms. Your energy. And that is how we, man... When I go to this definition, right, of ambassador, the etymology, and it says this diplomatic emissary of a ruler in the court of another. Meaning we're in someone else's kingdom representing our father. That is deep. Because it's not just on um, anybody else outside of you necessarily. That means when you understand this, you have a personal responsibility to be that representative correctly. And that's a challenge that we all face through the spirit. And that's why Hamashiach's sacrifice was made, that we may learn as we get transitioned into the kingdom. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. But in order for us to actually be able to acquire wisdom, we have to apply knowledge. And the greatest opportunities for us to apply knowledge is in our day to day life. The scriptures talk about is um, according to your ability, do good to thyself. That is applying wisdom in all aspects of your life. This kingdom is going to be destroyed. We understand that and we know that. But that doesn't give you license to be a nigga at work. To be out, out in public and being a nigga or, or um, have ignorant mannerisms, man. We are a representation of Yahweh Shem Shah at all times, man. And that means that we have to apply that same spirit to everything. And when I read 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter and 20th verse, it really hit me on a different level that we represent our father in the court of another nation of people. 
That's why when you think about what the Lord gave us as far as counsel, wise as I mean, I won't even say counsel commandments are uh, to be wise as a serpent, harmless as doves, to agree with thine adversary quickly. Why? Because you're in the court of another. But you still have the responsibility of representing the father correctly. Us as young sons, as young G's, all right, we are commanded to put forth our hand and represent our father correctly in everything that we do. From our um, relationships, our friendships, you know, and I'm talking about things outside of the brethren. All right. The brethren is really the fraternity or the, you know, when you go into that word fraternity, let me get it. All right, this is uh, the etymology of fraternity. It says body of men associated by common interests. All right, and what is that? The kingdom of heaven. All right, but everything outside of that, uh, of, of the brethren and the like-minded brethren, all right, has to uh, has to see how Bashimah shot through your conduct, through your actions. And I think about the ancient world, especially the movies I, I like to watch. When a, a when a representation a representative of another nation comes into that court, all eyes are on that representative. They're looking at the, how they dress, they're looking at how they speak, they're looking at their conduct. Are they slow to speak? Ready to hear? How hard they can? Are they um, saying many things in few words? They're they're looking. All of these mannerisms do matter especially in the ancient world where the messenger and how they conduct the message can mean war or peace. Now, we have the like-minded mission through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shah, and that means that we all have a personal responsibility to represent Yahweh Shemel Shah to the best of our ability in all truth and in sincerity. And that's something that... Uh, when I think about 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter and the 20th verse, this comes to mind to still aspire to be as good as we can be every day through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shai in every aspect to the best of our ability. Like the scriptures say, according to thine ability, do good unto thyself. Let me get it. I quoted a couple times. All right. Let me jump down to Ecclesiasticus. All right. And this is Ecclesiasticus chapter. Where is it? Uh, all right. Bear with me. Yep. The Wadi Haobashimel Shah is Ecclesiastes chapter 14 and verse 11. And it reads, My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself and give the Lord his due offering. All right. And that means through the spirit, you are, you do the best that you can in every aspect of your life. All right. And, and there's that's um, it's important. It's important not to use um, this truth as a reason to not apply uh and be the best that you can be in everything that's being put in front of you if it's your job the lord gave you that job and it's important for you to represent him correctly even if it's just a job if you have the faith that the lord is going to uh, free us from this situation then it wouldn't hurt you to be the best that you can in every aspect of your of your life to represent your how about shot it'll actually be better for you than to use um, the world being destroyed as a reason to um, not represent Yahweh by Shemel Shai in places like your job, which is meaningless really in, the, in our priority list. But it's important because you never know who might see this and may ask you and may inquire of the hope that is in you, the standard that is in you, because really that represents your standard. All right. And this is a process. We all grow. We are all learning through the spirit. You know, but it's something that um, Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, definitely made me consider and meditate upon, you know, to improve in my own um, mindset concerning the things that are outside of the ministry to um, 
to put uh, more emphasis and attention on the understanding that I'm representing Yahweh by Shemel Shai and all of these different things. Not that I'm doing something wrong, but that I could be doing better. With the understanding that I am a representation of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, just like you are. And we are Clark Kent. You know, we do keep a low profile through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. But it is important for us to represent correctly. And a lot of times I think um, through the spirit, you know, we um, we don't give our best because we know that the world is going to be destroyed. And we understand that. But at the same time, not doing our best doesn't represent you. How about Shemel Shah correctly? All right. And it doesn't do us any good. All right. And this is just something I was meditating on through the spirit and poverty. How about Shemel Shai? Um, it's It's. Man, like how the Lord put this together through the spirit, we're blessed uh, to know what we know and to understand that most people see Yahweh by Shemel Shai in us. And we just don't know it. And it's because a lot of times they see us and won't say it. They'll see your mannerisms and won't say anything to you. And this is just that exhortation to continue to abound in that. Because you never know who's watching and you never know. Who might be converted just off of your mannerisms and ask you and inquire of the hope that is in you. All right. So, Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Till next time. Shalom.